On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, have you ever seen this picture of Elvis? Wondered who the guy was, isn't it? Well, today you're going to learn about him. Hear stories from Bitsy Savory, the guy in the picture, and learn about the time that Elvis, Gladys, and Vernon had lunch at his mama and dad's house before the homecoming concert. It's a great story of what Gladys did that day during lunch and uh, some things he may still have saved from that afternoon. Guys, go get your popcorn ready. This interview is going to be epic. Stay tuned. Who was your dad here in Tupelo? My dad was J.M. Ike Saber. Okay. And uh, I'm Joe L. Bitsy Savory. Bitsy is the nickname. That's a long story. We won't get into that. that Bitsy, yeah. You'll have to tell me off camera how you got that nickname. Yes, right? I will. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad, he ran the fairgrounds here in Tupelo, Mississippi. Well, it, it was a, a membership association. Nobody could... In the fair association, any officer could never draw a salary or never take any money out. They could hire employees, and they'd had employees, a uh, few but not many, uh, one or two full-time uh, employees. But uh, anyway, nobody could get a salary. And he was a president manager from till uh, I can't remember when the last he had a. Uh, stroke and real sick for a long time and he could never do it. My brother took over, he passed away a few years ago. His name was James Mitchell Jr. And he, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he he ran as a manager, but it was, a lot of people call it the Tupelo Fair, it's not Tupelo, it's the Mississippi Alabama Fair and Dairy Show is what it is, that correct name. And, and uh, so, uh, but uh, anyway, he took, I, I would say in the, he was way in the, his early 30s, maybe 29 or 30, somewhere along it. They had a, a Tupelo Fair or some other different names. And, uh, but anyway, that's how, he, he, he was elected president and he was what you call president manager of the Mississippi Alabama Fair and Everything, but for, till he, till he got sick and died. Yeah. So how long was that? How low, how, how low was your dad when he left us? Dad died, and my dad was born in 1901, okay. and he died in 1968. So, you know, there's that famous story, I believe, in like 1945 or 40, during that time, Elvis sang at the Alabama, Tupelo, Alabama, or yeah. Mississippi, Alabama Fair. Yeah. And he, 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 he I think, got like fifth or Sixth place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen the photographs. I I was not there, so I can't yeah, say. Exactly. I can't say but I was witness that. And I have seen the photograph. The photographs of, were not in the. They were on the back of a flatbed trailer, I believe, and provided by maybe WLO or somebody like that. Okay. Yeah. So would that have been behind us at the fairground? It was uh, exactly where the the grandstand was later, where Elvis. That was really the original grandstand had been torn down, and uh, oh, two new additions on the side when when Elvis came. Oh, okay. And they, <clears throat> but uh, the original grandstand was wood. But, uh, but they, anyway, they tore. I don't know, remember what year. That's I say they tore it down somewhere in the forties. In the forties. Yeah. So the, the original. The, the original, and then they built the concrete. On and one that, side, and in the metal grandstand on the other side. That's what would have been there when Elvis played in 50, 56. Elvis played both everything that he ever played after that one on that truck was in Tupelo, Mississippi, was at that fairground. At the fairgrounds that your dad ran. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, okay, you're you're a kid here growing up. I guess you got to go to the fairgrounds all the time. Never, I tell you what, the first time I heard of Elvis Presley, okay. when he left, he left Tupelo in 
I, I can't remember the years. You, you can correct me. 1948 or 49. Is yeah, I thought it was, it was somewhere around 48. Well, in 1948 when Elvis left, I was 14 years old when he left. Okay. And uh, Elvis was 13 years old. Okay. Because I was born in 34, well, Elvis was born in 35. We're the same class. It just took me a little longer to get there. Yeah. <laughs> it took you a <laughs> few, few, few years later. But uh, anyway, yeah, they had that, and then uh, beside that, it was when they built the Elvis Presley birthplace. It is kind of named. It was Elvis Presley Park, but I've got a. I don't have it with me, but I've got a, the original station area. You do. That's got the pool built like a, designed like a guitar, and it was designed, I believe, by a, a friend of Dad's. Uh, Herbert Armstrong, he was an artist sort of thing. He did that design and all, and then they put the names of uh, people in, in uh, three, only three people that could uh, sign a check. There's four people. Because only on that account of that money that he came here. And it always, you know, anytime anybody's involved with public money, everybody's got questions. They said, you know, they took in $8 million last night, and they might not take in an eight. First place in the tickets wasn't like they are now. But anyway, I got the original thing, but I got the original, I got the bank statements. So I got the bank statements, and uh, this one touch, Jerry remember some of this, the, uh, on the, uh, when they, Got the money and they started that thing and had it wasn't to the it, it wasn't the the, mu, the museum out there it wasn't the uh, church uh, chapel it was it started out as his at basically his house the swimming pool and a ball field or something and that's what it started out. So where was the swimming pool at? Swimming pool was south. Jerry can probably been there probably more than where, where the building is today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where, the museum where, the what? where the building is sitting today, it's basically where the, 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 what the, building? Building, the building out there, that's where the pool is. The at. chapel? The chapel, whatever. Oh, it'd be, I finna say it had to be south of Elvis' house and behind it, yeah. but it was up on the side of the hill there. Yeah. And, uh, but it was, uh, you yeah, know, that's, that's when that was done. But yeah, all that work was uh, donated, mm. uh, those people's time. Now the... Uh, what was the big, y'all have to help me a little bit on this. What was the big uh, dealer of equipment in, from uh, Amory? Scrimmer. No, before him. Dalrymple. Dalrymple yeah. Equipment Company told him they'd provide the machinery. Okay. They got one oil company. I may be wrong about this. I believe that oil company, maybe pure oil company, Evans Gore. Could be wrong about that, but he was right by the fairgrounds. The reason I said his entrance, his building attached to the fairground, and they got it. But then people did the food and everything else, and they, Mr. Matthews, did the engineering and tell tell them everybody what to do. And he, he so he was a straw boss, and they they did it that night. They started that morning at daylight, and he said he'd have it finished by dark. They finished. <laughs> and he did finish it. And he moved, they moved that whole hill. They moved everything out there. Okay, and you, you said your dad was there on the hill. For yeah, I was there, yeah. And you were there, okay. Yeah, yeah I was there with my dad. And I mean, I wasn't doing I was a kid just sitting out there watching them on the thing. I was eating the donuts, so. But. So I guess this would be, this, you said this was up on the hill? This is where, if you walked in Elvis's house front door yeah. and walked out the back door and went up, there was a hill there. And that's where, that's where they did that. I, that morning, that's where them and Mike's brought the donuts and everything. And and Mr. Matthews was the one that was doing the construction. He is not involved. So you were telling me who was the mayor here in this picture? The mayor is James Ballard. All right, let's hold that up. And, all right. So this is the mayor. This is the mayor right here. And then he was? He was Mr. Merchant. I don't know, his, what was his first name? Mr. Martin, he was the mayor, last mayor of the city of East Tupelo. Of East Tupelo, where Elvis was born over there. Yeah, and they gave up a charter in 1946. And then there's your father. And this is my dad. And 
And that's up on the hill if you go out the back of the first place. Well, yeah, you go up on the hill, up there, the top of the hill. That's where they started moving the dirt. Wow. That's a great picture. I don't remember it, Bert. Huh? I don't remember it, Bert. Was it Raymond? On that I, We were talking about something about Tupelo High School. Yeah. The historical committee had in the paper, the Courier, the other day about four or five things about Tupelo High School. Yeah. And I was looking at it about five. They had some people on what school there, just like I did. One of them was the same time. And they had five things they said about four of them wrong. In that sad and these are guys that do it all the time. So you have to, just like you just told me, what we do these videos for is we want the truth. And we have come to learn that there's so much false in the oh, Elvis world. Oh, I don't doubt it. In the Elvis world. And I hate that for Elvis because, yeah. you know, I mean, if the guy... I didn't, re alive, I didn't I realize didn't like, somebody, <laughs> they had a meeting and they had a lady there they wanted to meet me. They wanted me to meet and I went down that morning. And they, I was not a part of the meeting, but yeah. she was from the Memphis. She was from Memphis and she was on the committee of Elvis Presley Foundation, they call it. Whatever. I don't. I don't know what Elvis Presley Foundation is, but she was. She came down and she was answering questions and speaking. She was sitting next to me, and she said something about the, the 19. I guess it's 56, 56, 57. I, they run together, but uh, she said uh, something about different things they had that like this, and I said uh, something about. Well, I don't know how it came up, but she, we're talking about things that they had at the fair. They sold trains and stuff like that. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't very much of that stuff. But I remember Colonel Tom Parker, and I uh, can't think of the guy's name. You never, you ne you ne they never talk about him. He was a front man for the Elvis Presley. He came, uh, I got a picture of him. Uh, Tom Parker. My dad. Uh, Tom Diskin. Tom Diskin, that was Parker's right hand man, right? Front man. He front I thought they called him the front man, but I don't, I don't know what his title was. But he, he was there the whole time sitting up there. So this is out at the fairground? Yeah. This was at the fairground. And that's probably the morning of the show? No, this was like a. a I'm going to say a week before. A week before, so they came out to check the place out. Yeah, but uh, Diskin was there. A lot of yeah, and there's a Elvis Sings article in the newspaper. That is great. And he's the man that came in, make sure the signs what the, that they had put the stage in the right place. He worked for the Colonel. He worked for the Colonel. Yeah, I, I can see him now. I'll have to go back and. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, he was like this, and of course they weren't there. But anyway, the, the boy there was a boy from the commercial peel was going to be the next day or something like that, and she said something about a program or something. She said, well, there well, wasn't a formal program like a football program or anything else. And I didn't say anything, and she said, minute they went around, and I said, well, they had a program. She said, because Elvis uh, and the Colonel gave my dad, I don't know whether they're together, but anyway, it was from them. And when I took over his desk, he sent his desk original program. It's just pristine. Nice. The whole program. It's you, got Elvis on the front, Elvis, Tupelo, all the stuff like this. And she said, the lady's questioned me. She said, Mr. Saber, there was not a... I said, yes, there was. And she says, they asked the Tupelo, and I said, do y'all have one at the museum? I said, no. I said, do y'all have one at the foundation? And she said, well, I'll tell you what, if you if you let me see it, I said, I got it right here. And I handed it to her. She said, my God, I've never seen this thing. She said, I have never seen this. Nobody ever seen it. So I, anyway, she took it, and I said, if you want to, take your picture, but you hold it up because you got it in your hand. Yeah, exactly. Then the next thing was, would you make a donation of that to the Elvis Presley Enterprise? I still don't know what it is. She's very nice. She's very nice. You didn't do it, did you? Huh? You didn't do it, did no, you? No. Yes. Oh. It's so great because, like, it, it, yes. There was a program for this performance at the fairground. Well, I had it. Man, it was your dad's. And well, I it mean, came from the it, and it's got some record companies on the back of it. Something like RCA. Yeah. Yeah. He would do RCA. Yeah, it said because he had something. The program RCA. was something. Whatever they put cut. 
they have to do it by law or so. Anyway, they had it on the back. But they had Elvis, and then they showed pictures in the inside. But you don't, re you know, I told the guy, I said, now don't think about Graceland, because this is not Graceland. No, this, this was on out of South Haven or somewhere in his house. Yeah. All right. It shows. He and his mother and them, and the, when they bought the Cadillac and it was at the house, showed pictures in that old house okay. of them and everything. But it, there's nothing about Graceland or any of that in it because that had never happened at that time. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 But that house was your dad's. Huh? Is that house your dad's house? No, the, I'm talking about Elvis's house. Oh, okay. Elvis's right. house in... Oh, it, it, that where was he? He wasn't in Memphis, was it? South? Yes, was it? yes. Audubon. Audubon. That's where he lived at. Okay, okay. He bought a house. Yeah. It looked like a modern type. Mm -hmm. More like in the yeah, thing. It's yeah, there. yeah. It's, Audubon. it's called yeah, Audubon. Yeah, yeah. But now, my dad, the reason I say, we have pictures of Elvis and Vernon. Some good ones of Vernon. Got one of Vernon. Vernon coming out the front door and got a cigarette hanging <laughs> out of his mouth. And Gladys and all them, but uh, there, and it was uh, only my dad, my mother, Mitchell, he's dead. Joan, his wife, he's dead. Uh, Mitchell was your brother? Huh? Is Mitchell your brother? Yes. Okay. He's my brother. And uh, let's see, my mom, Vernon, Elvis, and Gladys. And Gladys. But when he came and pulled up out front, there were two girls in the car. Now, I don't know who, don't know why, he was in that car and it was, a, the first car I believe he came in was a Lincoln, had a spare on the back. I remember that. And it was high, it had everything, but Daddy told him, and Daddy told him, anybody, there's nobody can take a picture. He told the family, if any of you take a picture, you're going to be in serious trouble. And there will be no pictures in this house. In this house. And believe me, there was no pictures in that house. But a funny thing happened in that house. And of course, I keep everything. My mother always sat at the one end of the table in the dining room. And my daddy says, the other end. Well, my mother sat where the kitchen comes out right like this. And she had a silent butler. You ever heard of a silent butler? I have. I have. Okay, okay. Well, where Dad, uh, Vernon sat over here and Dad sat right there. But my mother came in and Gladys came and sat before anybody sat down. She sat in my mother's chair. Oh, okay. Gladys, nice sad lady. Anyway, she sat down at this end right here and we were putting like this, but Mother hadn't thought about it. But under the carpet, when they built a the house, they put a silent butler. Yeah. And it's so you hit it, and it goes, man, man, like in the kitchen. You let them know. Yeah. And, yeah. But anyway, so we'd been sitting there about four or five minutes, and Mother had asked what Elvis liked to eat, and everything that any, anything he, and let me how he kept his side. No one he got big. That guy, that horse. He had uh, sugar, sugar ham and all this kind of stuff. It, I mean, it had everything. But anyway, we were eating it like this. We were sitting there just talking. Just family. And it had the, be careful. The help, the people that helped us in the, thing, in the kitchen. Uh, well, they uh, were sitting there and all of a sudden something said, uh, mm, you could hear it in there. But you weren't looking at everybody, looked at everybody. I didn't think about that. Mother didn't. And uh, Mama looked at Daddy, and they looked at each other. And she's, she's leaned up like this, sitting on, on this chair. And talk. I'm sitting right there, what, about where you are. And uh, I see Daddy looking like this. He knew what it was. And about that time, uh, Vern said, what is that noise? My Daddy said, excuse me just one second. I'll never forget as long as I live. We was all sitting there. My daddy gets up, walks around, and goes into the uh, breakfast room, into the kitchen, and shuts the door. And I heard a funny little buzz sound. Well, I didn't know what had happened, but no, no noise. Daddy's not an electrician. He don't know anything else. That buzzer's on the wall. 
he wrenched up and grabbed that buzzer and ripped it out, tore it out of the wall. <laughs> tore it out of the wall. Well, we didn't, I didn't think anything more about it. That, uh, those days weren't gone. We went to sell that house. I went up there and they were taking the carpet out. I just got thinking. I said, I wonder if that buzzer still is. <laughs> and I went up there and was pulling that thing about. I said, let me pull it back right here. And believe me, that it's a butterfly. It's called a butterfly. Okay. All right. It's got, it looks like a four leaf clover. Okay. It's like it's got four petals. Okay. And, thing, and any side you touch on, it grounds the buzzer and it'll go off. So anyway, I took it, cut my, cut the wires off. Perfect shape. Believe me, it's brass. It's brass. It looks like the day they put it in that thing right there. And I've got it in my closet. You do? Right have out there. I put it in the house. But anyway, I kept it. And I sh I, they wanted that for the thing. Museum. So that's what she was stepping on. That's what Miss. Yeah, when Miss Miss Preston, Vern, Vern, Miss mother sat down. That's what her foot hit. And the uh, horse did hit him. You see that? What are you doing, man? What's going on? The difference My dad kept everything about fair and stuff in his desk. And when he died, I took over his office. And he had a lock on thing, and I saw it when I had all the fair catalogs and stuff like that. But I looked at the, I, I, one day I saw Elvis file. And look at it. I could not find the contracts. The contracts were Elvis, Vernon, Mayor Ballard, and my dad. That's the four that could sign a check on that thing that you they were coming here to do. Yeah. But uh, anyway, they didn't, uh, could never find those things. But uh, I did go later and get those checks. And somebody said, who got the money? A bunch of people in government. Said, I'd, like to know, I'd like to know about that money. What they did, they took all them hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars they took over there. That one day, at, you know, at 4,000, 5,000 people at 50 cents a ticket. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, that ain't going to, you got calls too, but I don't like it. But then I was looking through there, and a uh, guy that taught school time, his name was, he's something in school. Tidwell. Yeah. Who? What was his first name? But he, same time he was in school, and he kept on working with the city. Right. And so I put, finally went through there and I said, closing the account. I don't know whether Vernon signed it. I know, uh, I don't like this. But anyway, Mayor Ballard signed the check. And they took all the money and gave it to the best thing they could for my dad. Gave it to the City of Tupelo Park and Recreation Commission. And Mr. Tidwell was head of the Park and Recreation, and he deposited it to the City Tupelo Fund. So that's... With the money. Yeah, and not only I've got the check, I don't have folks, I have the checks, the bank statements, and everything, how, how that was done. That's incredible, man. Yeah, but wow. I still got that. Still got that check. This is the bank statement you were looking for. Oh. This is the last of Elvis Presley fund turned over to the Park Commission. And is that amount right there? That's the original envelope. This is original envelope. This is hi. How you doing? The original envelope right there, and this is the check. This is the check itself. The return check, and there it is, right there. That's the return check. And it cleared out that again. The last check written for the youth. Gladys. It didn't happen. Smith. Gladys Love. Twenty-eight hundred and three dollars and seventeen cents. This is the one that killed me. That now one of them's got he did some. Well, he says 35 here and says August 35 6, here. But on that other one, this one says 34 down here and 35 up here. Well, I got 35 right here, but you got January 7th. Well, see if it's not a 34 and one we did somewhere. There it is right there. Yeah. 
Because you can't be die before you're born. No, you can't do that. I don't get it. And that's the last check. That's, that's that closed the, it out. That closed it out. And no longer did any of the fire association, my dad, uh, any of those people have anything. It turned over to the city. And it collapsed. Gov city government, and uh, they took it from there. I don't Joe, know. Got his so did your dad ever tell you how he got Elvis to come back here? Did he call Vernon? Did he? How, how did that happen? My dad was head of the Mississippi Alabama Freighter thing like it. And they had a convention every year in Chicago. Okay. And he'd go up for two days and he signed up to get a carnival to come to the fair. Okay. Uh, you know, people said that when is the fair coming, Daddy would always have this funny thing. He'd get he'd really get upset. He said, The fair is always here. The carnival comes. Okay. It, it's sort of a joke with the family. I'd always ask when is, when is the fair coming? <laughs> Daddy say, "You idiot! Don't you know?" <laughs> but anyway, that. Uh, but anyway, those things like that. But they. It's, I don't. So know. did he call Vernon? Huh? Did your dad call Vernon? No, he, no. When he was at the thing, he saw, he met Colonel Tom Parker in Chicago. And Ch Colonel Tom Parker wasn't there. He was just something doing that. I don't know. It, that he, it ever, maybe he had met him at a carnival convention before or something. He, he did things for other people too at the time. Well, see, the colonel, the colonel was in a carnival. You know, he was a, that's where he I'm going to bet you money that they contacted Mr. Saban like they did us at high school. See, they contacted us. We didn't contact them. They contacted us. Okay, so you okay, so they probably contacted they made, they made it Well, easy for me. anyway, Daddy saw him and he, he got talking to him. They got talking about what I understand. Daddy came back and said that I talked to him and he said to bring it up. He said he gave me a number. I've also got the uh, my daddy's thing on his desk with the unlisted number of Elvis Presley's private phone at Graceland. See, I've got to see this. <laughs> you know, he, he and somebody that lady said. You have, I said, I don't have, but my daddy's thing here on his desk. I got it right there. Yeah. It says right here, Elvis. Vernon Presley, Elvis Presley, and Colonel Tom Park. Here is that phone book of Bitsy's dad, J.M. Savory's. He could call Colonel Tom Parker, Nashville, Tennessee number, UN 50372. Or you could give Elvis a call right now in an unlisted number, P-E-X-77269. Elvis was EX-77269, and this was J.M. Savory's phone book, and it was taken from his desk by Bitsy, and we have it all these years later. How cool is this? So you were telling me, though, Elvis stayed at your dad's house? Doing it. Elvis did stay at y'all's house? Yeah. Spend the night? No. Yeah. He came during the day. And he, what he would do, he came in the morning and he would have lunch. The one time, this is just one time, he went upstairs, and I'm trying to get this right. It, it was either fit fits or seven, because my son that I lost was a baby. Okay. And we were living with my mom and dad upstairs. Okay. My wife, ex-wife. And anyway, I heard this ruckus going on, and Elvis had gone upstairs, and he, whatever the time they were going to have that, show I forgot what the time frame was and anyway it was an afternoon he, show and an evening show. Yeah, well it was I guess it was an evening show. He went inside, he got something to eat, and he went upstairs in my dad's bedroom and we went downstairs and I don't know where Vernon and him gone somewhere. Elvis went up by himself and stayed in my dad's master bedroom up there and had his own bath and everything. Went to sleep, took a nap, whatever. Nobody bothered. Said if he wanted anything that called downstairs and it'd be brought to him whatever he wanted. And then he came back out. But it was about sometime in the afternoon. The only thing I wished I'd ever had a picture of was the little my son was real small. He about a year old, a half year old. And he starts crying. Well it got he's right next to Elvis's room. Okay. And he has a you know those old baby beds so they don't have any. Elvis goes in and picks up and comes right there and said, anybody know this guy? <laughs> but anyway, that was the only 
they, they, no, he never, he, not that I know, he ever spent the night. He just came over and I ate lunch. I thought he spent the night once. No, well, he, I can't, I can't remember. I don't, you know, I can't tell you. I wouldn't tell you if I didn't know. Yeah. So he came over there when he came back to play the fairgrounds. He well, came to see your... Every time he played at the fairground, that was two years in a row, 56, 56 and i tell you a very interesting quick story that make you tears, bring tears right. to your eyes. Yeah. They so guys, stay tuned to learn about what would bring a tear to your eyes on the next episode with Bitsy Savory about his stories with Elvis in Tupelo, Mississippi in September 1956 and when Elvis returned back in 1957. I'm telling you, it's going to be some good stuff. Thanks for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Don't double dribble. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new Elvis episode that I upload each Tuesday and special ones here and there. Until next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.